volunteers. <laughs> Welcome to Okay. Within the Chaos with your host, Rodney Shortridge, and co-host, Robin Dalton. Okay, now, Robin, I know I have you on air with me. Um, Rodney, do I have you? And he's not with me. Uh, uh, let's see. <laughs> he's MIA, people, MIA. Let's see. This is um, not good. <laughs> he's been MIA before, but we've always found him, so hopefully he's not far. Okay. Well, let me let me see what our issues are here, Robin. And, and you can go ahead and uh, start out the show if you'd like, or we can hang back and, and wait for Rodney. Well, he has a little intro set up, but um, I can wing it just so there's just not awkward silence. Um. <laughs> the intro as the intro was actually already played, so he's good to go. Yeah. Well, uh, he wanted to first of all let everyone know thank you for this opportunity, and we are really excited about this adventure, and we are looking forward to all of our special guests. Um, this is a great opportunity for Rodney and myself, along with our paranormal group, Black Diamond Paranormal. And we are tonight going to let everyone enjoy the wonderful Connor sisters. They are great, great girls, and we love them to death. And we just can't wait to talk to them and ask them some questions. And they're a real treat. I think everybody will really enjoy them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The, the Connor sisters are awesome. <laughs> yes, I love Misty and Ashley. They are great. They have uh, really done a lot for us. To, you know, they've made great contacts for us. And they are just oh, wide they, open you know, and fun. Oh, yeah, them girls are wide open. <laughs> <laughs> they most um, definitely are. Yeah. Um, so hopefully still having... be... <laughs> she's still having technical difficulties. <laughs> he is. He's he's from Buchanan County. That, that just says it all. Yeah, he he does have difficulties at times. And there he was worried that I wasn't going to uh, get through like I was supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. You're still waiting on the Connor sisters, so they you're still good to go. Um, but yeah, I think Rodney's uh hopefully he might have to call in uh, by phone until he figures the studio out. And that's fine. That is perfectly fine. Yeah, he'll he'll eventually get there. <laughs> we're we're always late waiting on somebody. Usually not him, but we're always waiting on somebody. <laughs> <laughs> So, Robin, can you tell everybody a little bit about yourself while we're waiting, waiting on Rodney to uh, come on air? Well, um, my name is Robin Dalton, of course. Um, I started out with Rodney about eight years ago with the Black Diamond Paranormal. Uh, when we started out, it was me and him and just a couple digital cameras and a DVR. And we built, you know, we've built up through the years and have... You know, done a lot of investigations, and we love what we do and trying to expand what we do. So when we got this opportunity for this show, we, me and him decided we were going to take it. And that way we can go in depth a little bit more about other things. Even though we love the paranormal, we just, you know, we'd like to talk about other things as well. And basically that's it. Other than being a mom, I'm a ghost hunter. I, I <laughs> hear you, Mama. <laughs> I hear you. Um, well, hopefully, hopefully we've got Rodney coming on here soon. Like I said, um, I've sent him the number, so he might have to call in, and and that's not a big deal, guys. I totally understand. And you know, when I first came on the air um, with Ryan, I was, I was a nervous wreck. Um, my second show into it, I got less alone, and luckily, oh look there, who do we oh, have we with us? I'm sorry. Ron? <laughs> there he is. I didn't get the email. Okay, to <laughs> okay I'm going to leave y'all to it and y'all have a good show. Okay, now this is the way to kick off a show, ain't it? <laughs> All right, I'm going to 
we'll leave y'all to it. Y'all have a good show, darlings. All right. All right. Thanks, darling. <laughs> All right. Boy, I tell you, if I can screw it up, I can find a way to do it, can't I? Well, my intro wasn't as great as the one we t- we discussed earlier, but I did manage to throw a few things out there. <laughs> uh, okay, so what do I need to say? Just, hey, I'm here. Go ahead and do your intro. I mainly told them about myself. <laughs> See, that's, why, that's a good thing about having you as a backup. Uh, I always could trust you to be there. Well, Holly kind of that. Uh, you know, led me in the right direction because I'm I'm a nervous wreck tonight. <laughs> Just think how I feel now. My butt hose so damn tight you couldn't stick a damn <laughs> champion. <laughs> yeah. Well, go ahead with your beautiful intro you did. It was great. Okay, let me try it again then. Happy okay. New Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, it, I'm sure that one listener that stayed to see if I was actually going to show up. Uh, <laughs> I just want to welcome everybody and thank you all for joining us. You know, uh, like I said, this is the first night kicking out the show, and boy, did I kick it off good. Um, this show is uh, called Within the Chaos. <laughs> My name is Rodney Shortridge, and you all have been talking to or listening to uh, uh, my lovely co host, Robin Dalton. And. Uh, Tonight, hopefully, if they call, <laughs> we're going to have the hot and sexy love goddesses of the paranormal, the Connor sisters. Uh, Misty and Ashley, they're the founders of SOS, uh, Sisters of Salem Research Society, and they also have a radio show called Paranormal Party. And as soon as they get on here, uh, we're going to uh, get them going and ask them a few questions and uh, talk about the paranormal. And thank you again for covering for my big butt. That's what I'm here for, big guy. <laughs> well, let me see. I think, I think they're here. Let me see if I can get them on here. Okay. Are you, Are you ladies there? We are, we are. How you doing, Rodney? There's oh, my girl. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just so sweet of the hell out of you, too. <laughs> that, now, you know, Rodney, you have to go by what Ron gave you, and that is the Sultan of Sexy, the Rodney. Sexy Sultan. Oh, that's yes, yes. That is damn good. <laughs> don't shit him, don't it, girl? It does. It does so much. I, I see that, and I was like, "How did he know?" <laughs> With his long, flowing <laughs> hair going on. <laughs> I'm serious. No, you should start referring to yourself as that. I'm serious. That's coin. That should be your on-air name now. Like truck handles, uh, dating yeah. website, any of that. <laughs> Sexy. <laughs> I wish I would have thought that for myself. I, I actually enjoyed the Sultan of Sexy myself. I like that. It adds a little bit of class to it. You know yeah. that's the new caption under your pictures now. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Might as well if you ain't wise and last, because it won't be long, I'll be dead and gone. <laughs> I don't say that. <laughs> wrinkled up old man and they'd be like I'd be like they used to call me the Sultan sexy sexy Sultan uh, they'd be like yeah right go on down the road just go on down the road <laughs> well uh, girls uh, well, since you all are on here and yeah. we're going to we're going to try to ask a few questions we're going to try I mean you know how we get to talking and you know, we'll get off uh can you girls remember when we first met? I do, but I don't know if you all do. Oh, my gosh. This is like one of those questions you ask your husband just to fuck with him. Um, <laughs> I do remember the first time I met Rodney Shortridge. Robin, you beautiful thing, you. I didn't remember seeing you there, but <laughs> it was an NPC meeting. They, they don't even have this son of a bitch anymore. And it was in a library in Fincastle. And it was, I'm going to tell you why Rodney's group stood out. One, he had that damn van all pimped out with his logo. (laughs) But also because he had this friend with him, and we were listening to the MUFON man. Um, 
which really, like, changed me in Ashley's world. But he had a guy in his group, and he was like, why have there never been pictures of inside of UFOs? And I'm like, dude, just give this guy a break. He has came here to talk to us. And I remember thinking, and I think I said to him, I'm like, do you think the aliens are going to let us take uh, pictures inside that son of a bitch? But, yeah, that was it. Rodney, I'd like to tell you how I remember meeting you. <laughs> that was a whole bunch of shit she told you, but in my mind, you were on a white stallion, and the wind was blowing softly on a beach, and your hair was flowing behind you. It's blowing. It was. It was. I bet you know, his face is about five shades of red. You don't have to be telling people that. Oh, my God. <laughs> You blew it. God dang it. Dang it. I mean, Misty could try to say that horse shit, but me and you know the real true story, Rodney. I was trying to keep it professional. I was. I don't know well, where I don't think met, I but I met at the beach. I don't think I should say it on air, but I'm pretty sure I know what drew his attention to Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> honey, honey. Robin, let me tell you, darling, he met Ashley when she was, well, let's say, honey, we all like to eat, okay? Um, that, that was Ashley's uh, plumper days, and I'm not talking about her boobs. <laughs> she still has no boobs. <laughs> <laughs> That's the same thing. Just don't say damn nothing. Uh, Rodney has a picture of us at this meeting, and he says we look young in it. It's we not fat. Yeah, it, it, we had so much fat on us, it, like, plumped out them wrinkles, honey. That's what happened. It wasn't, like, a long time ago. <laughs> well, see, when I first see y'all, I'm like, gel bait. I don't, <laughs> gotta be careful, gel bait. <laughs> but, but now that y'all have grown up and blossomed, then now I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <I'm right. laughs> yes, girls, and unfortunately, he does have video of us playing with our own boobs and butts. Oh, I remember that. And uh, he probably has videos of me giving you my boob then, Robin. Yes. Remember, I took out my extra little pieces, and I was like, hey, we got to try these. You know, yes, they're very have- nice. I have yet to purchase any, but I, that is on my to-do list. Oh, hey, there you go. Hey. I got, like more butt, videos. Those videos. I got more videos of people picking their nose and butts than you could ever imagine. <laughs> we were not picking our nose. <laughs> all the investigations we've done throughout the years it, it's it's comical mm, heck yeah man you know what Ashley uses our footage for um, literally like if she don't <laughs> this is terrible but if she don't like somebody on our team what she will do is she'll be like oh okay I got the camera tonight and she will follow them around it won't even be on ghosts. It'll just be like, I, I think I feel a st- spirit over there next to Jennifer, and, and I'll just show it on Put there. the camera on her and watch as I talk. And I <laughs> swear to God, she'll come back to me the next day, and she's like, I know that bitch done gave you a dirty look, sissy. And I'll be like, leave her alone, Ashley. She's like, no, I have the footage. And she will put that shit in to get people in trouble. So don't ever go with Ashley ghost hunting if she's got a camera. I'm just warning you. She's trying to get you in trouble. Oh, hell, man, her have fun with that. Oh, hell. <laughs> you got to act dumb to get things done. That's all I'm saying. That's my slogan. That's my life thing there. What I love about when I'm looking at video is when people ask a question and the other person thinks it's a dumb question and they'll roll their eyes. Yes. <laughs> That's what I try to capture. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll roll their eyes and they'll shake their head like, Jesus, what a dumbass. All right. Yeah. Ashley does that, but as, like, a presentation to me. Like, I'll be like, she'll be like, Sissy, I really don't think these people are good for the team, blah, blah, blah. And I'll be like, Ashley, give them the benefit of the doubt. She's like, exhibit A. And she'll turn it on TV. It's like uh, lawyers. I have to build a case to get rid of people. Friends, people on our team. I mean, uh, we're not hiring right now, but we're a really professional, (laughs) great group. And uh, you should really hire us for anything else. I like to trim the fat and have the best of the best. That's what I'm trying to say. She does. She builds cases. And she'll write everything down, like if they roll their highs at me. I mean, this, uh, she should be a lawyer. I mean, and then she'll present it to me, and she'll be like, I know you want to keep them, but look at all this. Look <laughs> well, what I caught them doing. Well, see, that's, yes. that's, they, they, lay out, they lay out the case for me for months or years years to get rid of them, and, and I won't do it because I'm just too good-hearted. 
That's me, yes, Rod. We have that problem. <laughs> That's We're me. We're like the misfit toys off of Rudolph. There's all. <laughs> we just kind of got a mixture, and he just won't get rid of. <laughs> I'm serious. Like it takes a lot for me to get rid of somebody. Like I'm, I'm, I, it does because I feel bad for them. And then they will. You don't understand. I mean, it is like she will constantly be like, hey, "Let me show you this," and let me show you, whatever she could build this case with. And then eventually, I'm just like, "Fine, let's do it." And I, I just, you know, normally Rachel, our other founder, is right there with her too. She's like, "Listen, Misty, we got to do this." And but I feel bad. I, you know, Rodney. You know how we feel. Oh God, I know. It kill it kills me because it, you know after you've been with these people for a uh, set amount of time, they're more than just a friend. They're they're more you know they're like family. Yeah. And when when somebody's not pulling their way, and then you got the rest of the group that's up your ass raising hell to get rid of them. You, you keep talking to them. You keep giving them the benefit of the doubt. You keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on. And that's the reason why in my group, you know, uh, I let them vote for it. You know, put it up for a vote. You want them out? Y'all put the blood on your hands. <laughs> God damn it. Right. That's why we're down room. to, like, almost nobody. <laughs> I'm serious. Listen, Robin, if I let my sister and Rachel vote. We wouldn't have a damn member, and they might try to get rid of me. I can't let that happen. I can't let that happen. <laughs> well, they can't get rid of me. Hell, I'll get rid of all of them before they get rid of me. This ain't no I damn do. <laughs> Now, right now, we have a very slim group. We have, well, I'm not saying in size, so, you know, like our voluptuousness. I'm saying in, like, I wanted to make it big at one time. I wanted to get as many people as I could because I thought, let's go to trips, and you got to have more people to pay for them trips. But, hell, man, as the years have gone by, we've made such good friends like y'all and, like, Holly and Ron and uh, all these people around, our Gordonsville people and stuff, and uh, Tennessee. You just start doing so many things that you meet such great people that I'm like, hell with it. We can do that rather than stock my numbers with people that aren't the best of the best that I think, you know? Well, yeah, oh, yeah. this is so hard to find what we're looking for. I mean, we're such a wild bunch. <laughs> Most people would take a, you know, take a chance just walking in the room with us. So, you know, if you're going to hang with us, you got to be kind of tough as nails. And it's hard yeah. to find people we'll get. I know, uh, you, you know... know group and and mm-hmm. people come and go which i'm sure you've had the same thing yeah. and and you know there's people there that have left that want to come back one day and i don't have a problem with that i mean they've been some really good now i've had a couple that they ain't no way i let them through the door but <laughs> that's everywhere i guess <laughs> well, I yeah i've got i've got a couple that and this is so crazy you probably understand this, Robin and Rodney. Like, when you get to – it's like they're such good friends with you, and every time you bring them on the team, it just is freaking disastrous. We have this one girl that we love dearly, and we just know that her on the team, just the mix of the chemistry is not good, but she's great. And we're still friends with her, And but it it took a while to get to that point of both of us saying, hey – this just isn't working in the group, but we love you, you know. But sometimes we just got to do this. Oh, yeah, I, I mean, know. it's hard to find. I mean, I think when you've been with somebody as long as me and Ronnie's been together, and of course our other case manager, Michelle, and, you know, a couple others that's been with us a while, you know, we kind of mesh together and we know how to investigate together, and we were kind of in our own routines together. And you bring somebody else in and they're complete opposite, it almost makes it difficult to do your job when you're in there doing it. Oh, that's true. So, you know, there's, when we go out, you know, there's only a couple of them I would really prefer to investigate with, and it kind of makes me feel bad because I feel like maybe I'm ignoring the other one. <laughs> well, I, can't really, I can't investigate with anybody but Misty because I know her sounds and her tendencies, but once you bring somebody else in there, I had this one guy, he stunk and his nose was whistling, <laughs> <laughs> and every time his damn nose whistled, he was like, it's a spirit. And it was his nose, and then he would get out. He'd fall asleep. It was just terrible. I couldn't even. I was like, damn, that spirit's in your boogers, man. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. You're not going to believe this story. I got to tell it. Matt, I know you're going to kill me if you're listening, but I got to tell it. Uh, 
one of our guys, he was a new guy, and we were uh, we were investigating a house. And when I was listening to the audio, I kept hearing this. Ah! I went, what the <laughs> <fuck?"> <laughs> And I heard it, like, you know, in different rooms and different places. That, ah! And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> what is that? So I wrote it down and marked it. Even had them, you know, the uh, people cut it. They cut it for me, and then when I was playing it, uh, before I even took it to the client, I was even talking to him about it at a meeting. Matt did that. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's that fucking sound I heard. <laughs> and I'm just, just one time, Misty. Oh, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. <laughs> we were at this Victoria's location with a whole bunch of other teams, and me and Misty were sitting on a bench. <laughs> and it was a wooden bench. And Misty farted. <laughs> And when she did, the other team heard her in the other room and thought it was a ground. <laughs> and came running in there and was like, jump in that ground. And then she was so embarrassed, she said, yeah, it went that way. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't was imagine so she being embarrassed. <laughs> I was so embarrassed because you understand this was like a notorious, notorious place. Like uh, we pay big money and travel, and it was like all these other groups that we weren't. I mean, the people we were with, we really enjoyed, but these were groups we didn't know that well. So I really couldn't say, "Look, I done shit this bench over here." I couldn't say that. So I literally had to say it went that way, and I, we just sat there, and it was so. I mean, when they walked down the hall, like we started laughing and stuff, but I couldn't say. I didn't know them. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was trying to keep a little bit of professionalism. You <laughs> know, green ectoplasma coming around. I know. It was like, God, do you smell that? Oh, for smell? I'm like, yeah, God, the name is in here. It smells like it. It smells like it. So is this a coincidence that y'all don't have men, or is that how y'all started out, just decided you weren't going to have men? Oh, my gosh, Robin, that's a really good question. Okay. The men thing, I think that when we, oh, gosh, that's kind of cool that you asked that because we touched on that a little bit on our show this past week, and I don't know why. So it must be like we're digging up some old past or something. When we first started out, we started in another group a um, long, 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 long time ago, and we were really thankful to come in and be taught and stuff like that. But it seemed like in the group um, – that women weren't taken as seriously as the men. Like, the men could talk about stuff, and there was one uh, investigator that was like a co-founder, and no matter what she brought to the table, they just kind of overlooked it. They literally, like, sometimes would joke about her and stuff. I mean, okay, we were in on it, too. But anyway, um, (laughs) what we noticed is they never wanted to give us that title, and we could work, 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 but it was never – the men were always taken – as a lead. So when we left, um, and, and we everything's cool with us and stuff like that, and their path is one way and our path is another way, but we just kind of took um, notice of it. You know what I'm saying? So right. when we started, we started out with a page. Actually, even before Sisters of Salem, we started out with a page. It's called Women Who Investigate the Paranormal because we just wanted to focus a place for women to be able to talk, which now it's kind of cool and stuff like that. But we ended up, um, starting the group, and it was women that came from that group. And then we thought, this is really cool because if it's a man or something, we can get some really good evidence because if it's all ladies, then if I get a male EVP, then it's really, really cool. So it works right. out like that, but uh, Ashley is always looking for single hot men, not <laughs> on my team, but, you know, personally I'm looking. But, yeah, you know. Oh, no, 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 no. She has ruined many investigations with some damn men she's brought along. Oh my God! Was that Have an evening. That's what Ashley's in for. For <laughs> no, but seriously though, I mean, we do. We have all, now we're to a place that we're like, yeah. I mean, hey, well, you know, we all these groups we call family groups, and um, because we're just blessed to have a lot of really great people around us. And sometimes we do investigate with men, but there's never been a man strong enough to take on the sister title. Like, they would have to be a sister. <laughs> well, oh, honey, man, I could be a sister. Mm-hmm. Let's preach it. <laughs> <laughs> I've had to demote myself since we have friends to go places with me. I had to demote my dating to tour guys to try to get into sneaky places in the other areas. 
Not just the pants, as in the location. Yeah, yeah, right. We know what you're talking about. But <laughs> Listen, every time, if my sister sets her sights on a male, you best be believing that son of a bitch is crazy. I mean, she has the worst picker ever in the history. So if she goes over and finds a tour guy, you know, handsome or something like that, stay away from him. He is escaped from the damn loony bin. That's all I got to say. <laughs> got a title, I'm an equal opportunist. If you got, like, a job title I like, like, you know, if you're a tour guy, then I'm going to flirt with you to try to get in some. You sound so horrible. I mean, God bless, I give everybody a chance. <laughs>
minds, because so you can see things that we probably have overlooked over the years and just saw the lines of, okay, this is what we're going to do. They see more of the big picture because it's a fresh thought in the whole thing. I like that aspect if you're really serious about it. But I've been in contact with people that are like, hey, uh, look, look, well, he was kind of hitting on me, but he was like, hey, I'll take you to a location. I got my own group. Uh, we just got to break into this hospital, and I could steal your projector and everything out of there. And it was like oh, private man. property that he's going on trying to get me to go, and it was like that. Like, I think it's since I, TV shows, I always say, sometimes I say bad stuff about them, and then I end up meeting them, and I end up damn liking them. But certain shows make it seem like you're a rock star and that everything is negative in the house. And I don't really necessarily think that. So that's my thought. And then that gives young people the idea of that's how you got to go into it, and that's not necessarily what it is. Um, also, but then on the flip side of this, I have recently, we always try to help people as they're coming up. Like if they're, they're starting a group, like they'll come to me sometimes and I'll be like, man, you should start a group because you're really educated. Are you trying to educate yourself? And there's not one in this area, and we'll be glad to help you. Now, we've done that in numerous times. Um, recently we met this gentleman in Avenel. His name is Don. He's been coming for two to three years with his wife, and he's talked to us, I mean, yearly at this Halloween thing, and he said, you know what, I'm, I'm really thinking about doing this. And he's been talking to me a couple of years. He finally got a group together. And now that guy, he's been trying, he's taken years to get into the field because he's trying to do it right. Now that, I, I think I agree with it. But if you're in here for fame, or if you're in here just to go in and stir some stuff up because you want to be like Zach Bagans or whatever the hell his name is, then that's not the right reason. And your ignorance will show. I, I hate to say that, but it will. When you start talking to real paranormal investigators, it's going to show, you know? Oh, and yeah. I think I... that's what helped Rodney and, and myself a lot. Because um, I know Rodney did a lot of studying and research before he mm -hmm. started up Black Diamond. And I think that's what really helped us a lot. Yeah, I told yeah. you know I I mentioned the group we came from and that you know we parted from, but I tell you what we had to study. I the, when we came in, they gave us books and they showed us the very um, scientific way, and we will be, we will always be thankful for that. And we owe that. And I'll say that it's VPS. Um, a lot of people may think bad about them or whatever, but when we came in, um, I got to give them props. Nick and Donna were like, "You're going to study." get this book, and then you're going to, you know, learn this way. And I think they kind of looked down on other certain ways because they didn't think they were scientific and stuff. That's when we parted ways because I think it's not just about scientific, even though that's how we investigate. I think it's a whole array of shit. I'm really, and as we're doing, like the radio show, we realize that this is a big rainbow of different stuff that you can learn, you know? Exactly. Oh, I agree. I know with us, we, uh, like Robin said, I studied on this for over a year before I even decided to go ahead and drop the hammer and try to try to start a group. And mm -hmm. it it took a lot, a lot of reading. It, it also is a lot of field work. I mean, there's a lot of things yeah. I've learned since day one, our first investigation till now. It's, mm -hmm. You know, it's like orbs. Everybody's big about orbs. Well, I, I, I still say that it's the the jury's out on orbs. But, the, you know, I've learned that a lot of it's dust, uh, mist, uh, raindrops, uh, bugs. But, you know, it, it, each group, like you were talking about, everybody does their investigations differently or come at it in a different aspect as far as maybe religious or scientific or spiritual. And I don't see a problem with that. I just wish everybody just get along. <laughs> oh, Lord, honey. That's like uh, praying for peace in the world right there. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> it, 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 it's crazy. And, and how people just tear each other's so-called evidence all apart. You know, when I, when we present our evidence, I put it out there for the world to see. If they judge it, judge it. If they think it's something else, that's fine. Right. I'm just saying this is what we got. This is what we know it is or what we think it is or what it could possibly be. But, you know, don't come at us saying that we're saying that's 100% what it is because it isn't. We don't know. That's the thing about the paranormal. We're investigating right. the unknown. Now, I since we did that, now, uh, I've I, I seen that you're all in this uh, book here, uh, 
Can you oh. tell everybody about your little book and what's going on and who and what, where, when, and why? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Thank you so much for bringing that up, Rodney. Um, yeah, we – oh, my goodness. we got to give some big, big shouts out to Pat Bazaar. Let me tell you about this lady. She was the first one uh, – you were talking about you wished everybody got along. Well, when we first came out as our group, there was a lot of crazy – it seemed like there was more drama then than there is now. Or maybe we've learned how to handle it better now, just stay the heck out of it. Um, and this lady, Pat, was the first one to literally not care about anything going on and kind of noticed us and said, let me do an article on you. So she did an article in one of her write-ups. Then um, we, I've kept in touch with her, and then she said she helped us fill out our application to Scarefest where we got to talk last year. And she said, you know what, last year this time she said, you know, I'm thinking about doing this book on St. Albans, which I'd like to give your experiences. Do you have any experiences? So I sent her a solid EVP that we have, and I sent her a write-up, and she put us in the book. The and I, I'm so – she's been working this whole past year. I'm um, probably longer than that. Um, Shelly Mead, I think, did a little bit of writing in the book also. She's from St. Albans. She she does a lot of work up at St. Albans. Um, Marcel, who is the director up there, um, they've been really hands-on with this. And Pat has a love for that building. And what she's doing is taking – if you buy the book at um, – St. Albans itself, the proceeds go directly to the building to try to save it. Because that's one of the things that is horrible about things that are happening in our field is that all these notorious locations, a lot of them are just being bulldozed and new stuff built up. So these beautiful places are being lost that we love to investigate and can get some really good evidence. So in that, she has went around to all the groups that she knows or has been in contact with because Pat is just, Oh, I love her, and I can't say that enough, but she's really a good soul. Like, I've asked her before, why have you been so nice to us? And she said, you know what, I feel like we have to help each other more instead of putting each other down. Um, instead of saying, oh, I got one up on you, let me help you up. And she's just been really good. So she went around to all these groups, and she got their story, and she combined them into this book which is The Ghost of St. Albans. It went on sale, I think, January 1st um, at St. Albans. But you can also buy it on Amazon, and you can also buy it, um, what is it, Barnes, Barnes and Noble. Um, and that just tickles the shit out of me because we are now in a book that is sold at, on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and at St. Albans. And the, I mean, we couldn't be more tickled. Um, in that, because Pat is a psychic and her daughter is awesome and everything like that, when this last year was really hard on me and Ashley, and we we try to keep that undercover because we don't like to take our personal stuff out a lot, but we had a lot of personal stuff going on in our family with health and things like that, and we had a passing in our family. Well, when this happened, all this stuff was going on, we noticed that we were things were sparking up that we shouldn't know about, um, and, and it was crazy stuff. And then I, I would talk to her about it, and I would say, okay, what's going on? And when I did, she would advise us and say, okay, this is what's happening with y'all. And she's one of the only psychics that has – I'm not saying there's not a lot of good psychics out there. I'm just saying I haven't met them yet. Um, I've only met two or three that I would stand by and say these are legitimately it. Um, and she's one of them. And she's awesome. And she's guided us, which brings us to what are we getting ready to do? She asked us to be speakers. It's, well, like we've always had knew something was a little bit different. We thought it was just because we were sisters and we were closer. But when the passing happened, then we started noticing things on investigations. Like it was more like in our faces. Like we could hear things closer to us than what we had. And like we would like certain things would pick up that was more abnormal and not. We're, we don't like to say that we're any type like sensitive or gifted or anything like that. But we think everybody has the capability of that. And a lot of psychics would always come up to us and say, you guys have something. There's something different about y'all. And we'd be like, oh, no, no, you know. But after the passing, it kicked up a little bit of something, which is where we're going to talk about in Hearts and Spirit in February. It is a convention. I thought it was March. April. It's in April. April. It's April. April. Good Lord. Oh, we're going to be there when it's there. <laughs> That's in April. You can go to hearts and, oh. you can go to heartsandspirit.com, and you can actually buy tickets. It's a very... Oh, my gosh, guys. 
it is different than any other paranormal thing that I've ever been to because she actually goes at it not by paranormal, but she does it as let us help you if you've had a loss and show you how to actually address maybe if you yourself are intuitive or sensitive. And it's going to be at this beautiful um, manner, and they're going to do like a old type seance. And they're, I mean, I'm so excited, and we're lucky enough to be speaking there. And it's kind of like <laughs> open speak. And where is it going to be at? This is going to be at, oh, Lord, now we got to look it up. Um, Ashley's going to be looking that up right as we speak, Robin. That was a good question. <laughs> Yeah, we don't but, know where it's at, Chiki. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It is it is wonderful, though. And it's heartsandspirit.com. And it is – I've never seen anything like this. What, normally when you go to a paranormal convention site, it is, like, dark colors and this and that and other. This is beautiful. It looks like somebody's getting married, honey. It's very pretty, and it's going at it from a different point of view. Like, how do you deal with that loss, and how can you address if you've actually – started getting feelings, um, intuitiveness. i got to tell you, I want to give you all a clip of what happened to us last year. And as we've had this passing in our family, um, we literally would go on investigations because we didn't let anybody know that this was happening. We kept it all to our to ourselves. And we would go on these investigations, and me and her literally would sit in a hallway, and they would say, well, you might hear people shuffling around. And this was at Hillview. This is when we realized. It happened at Trans-Allegheny. Me and her would walk down a hallway, and we could hear them coming out. I mean, literally, we, you could hear a patient coming out. And, it, they, and not one of them, but you could hear them all. And it got really freaky when it came beside us and started breathing, and we both could hear it. And it was just me and her together. And that took me just completely by storm because it was like they were coming to talk to us. And we've never had that in this field. Normally you have to sit there for freaking hours and just sit and try to talk and stuff like that. This wasn't like it anymore. You would go down a hallway and then all of a sudden they would come to us and you could hear them coming out. So we now, did that make up. you feel did it make you feel like really scared or did it make Hell you yeah. feel when you wanted to embrace it? <laughs> no, seriously, it made me because – we have known, in this field, we have known constantly that we are, it's not like it is on TV. But in this, when it started turning around and they were coming like that, it scared mm-hmm. the shit out of me. I felt, like, very intimidated. Um, it, it was just different, wasn't it, Ash? Um, it's, usually you think of us as we're ghost hunters, but it kind of flipped to where it was kind of like they were hunting us. And it was just different. Cool. It's happened at another location when we were, like, physically ill. Like, we had a little bit of the ailments with our, you know, ourselves. But with this, it was they were coming to us. Instead of usual the ghost hunt, you just sit there in the dark forever with a little, you know, recorder, and you hope for something. But it was just, it was different with this. And we brought other people back with us to see if it would do the same thing. That was at Hillview. But it, Trans-Allegheny was... When we first noticed it, when we went to Hillview, yeah, that's what Ashley was saying. We would go down this hallway, and it was like it was very intimidating. Like I was, I gotta say, in this field, I've never been scared except like a handful of times, and it scared the shit out of me at those times. But to have them just come out, like, say you, imagine Rodney and Robin, you go down this hallway, and you're sitting there, close your eyes, and you hear all your team members walk up to you, right, and you know they're there. Now open your eyes yeah. and there's somebody there, but you could hear every sound that they're right there. And that's what it was. And it scared the shit out of us. I'm not going to shit you. So we would bring people back down that hallway and we'd say, listen, sit here. And you would hear a little bit of it, but nothing like when me and her are by ourselves. So we then went and I got in touch with Pat. And I was like, what the hell is going on? This is scaring the shit out of me. And that's when she said, you know, you may be starting to open up. This is, you know, this it's okay. Just calm down. You just need to guard yourself because you don't know if it's something good or bad that's walking up to y'all. So I, she really calmed us. Uh, I got to say, didn't she, Ashley? Yeah. It always looked like it made me feel better that she understood what was going on. Yeah. Uh- Mm-hmm. So um, uh, I, I, I kind of uh, tore up my question. Have you ever been afraid of any place that you've been to? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I don't think <laughs> there's only been one place that I'm afraid of, and, and we went back to it. Um, I'm going to say I'll say mine, Ashley, and you say yours because we might have different ones. Um, old South Pittsburgh Hospital. 
was the most terrifying thing just because of the experience I had. Um, and we literally got what we like to say, like, imprint of, I felt like that. It gave me a darkness. It gave me this feeling of darkness that was unbelievable. You mentioned on orbs, and I do not believe in orbs, but we have footage. We never brought this forward, by the way, because I don't believe in orbs. But where I was standing, I had to leave the room, and I'm, like, crying hysterically. And if anybody knows me, that shit don't happen, okay? But I had to leave the room. And you could hear my team. My team followed me and was like, are you okay? And I'm like, you know, just i got to get away from this area and things like that. And as you see us, we're in the hallway, and you can hear us talking. Um, the camera's still on, and something literally, it is like a, a orb or whatever, comes back in the room and goes right back in that corner. And there was no current of that way. It was like it had followed with me, and then when it was done with me, it walked right back to where it was, and I was. Um, that is the freakiest shit ever, and we've never released that because, to me, I know what happened there, Everybody does, and I guess that would solidify what happened. But I just, I don't think I'm ready to admit that part either. <laughs> but that was me. That was Old South. Ashley, where's yours? Honestly, when I go into situations like any big location, honestly, no disrespect to any location, I go in there thinking this is a bunch of bullshit and everything's a lie. So when I go in there, I don't really care. I'm not really scared. And if it's a good like place they should be able to prove me wrong that's how i feel so when i go in there and stuff starts happening that's when i get the shit scared out of me because then i realize how vulnerable i am and i don't if you can't see something it's really scary and then um with the situation at the one place she was talking about we also have like i said we don't believe in orbs at all we think it's dust or rain or anything really and dust falling it could be following you because you have a gust of wind but we had um a little object go across like four different things of electronics and all of them went off each time it went near it. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. what's, mm -hmm. oh, sorry, go ahead. That's okay. I was going to give you a tip. If you're ever investigating with Ashley, there's a couple tips of how she's afraid. One, it used to be that she started farting uncontrollably. It was so <laughs> god awful. We used to call her lack ghost intolerant because that bitch would start just farting. Guys, I was single. <laughs> Now, yeah, boys. <laughs> it was so it was so bad one time. I had to drop her off at base and be like, "Y'all got to deal with her." It was she, a fun trick with them. They loved it. I was like, because she has stunk up every room we've been in, and I can't take it no more. I'm about to die. But now, if you are with her, she will start fidgeting. She'll start getting up and like looking and stuff. It's like she's trying to figure out where the hell this shit's happening from, but it's not anything that will actually give you a reason, but you will see her start fidgeting. And she'll start tagging and stuff like that, and I'm like, you need to calm down. It's okay. We're we're going to be okay, you know? Dang. So, well, I noticed uh, you said that you had this, you know, this event coming up in a couple months. Um, I noticed y'all y'all do, you know, a lot of events, and we're trying, you know, we try to do several events through the year. Um, I actually got in contact or sent Marcel a message, we have never actually had the pleasure of being at St. Albans, so maybe we all could get together and maybe do a broadcast there or something, maybe in the near future. I am so glad that you, uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to let this cat out of the bag or whatever, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but I think. We can see it in the near future. Okay, happening. listen, I'm using my psychic powers, darling. Um, okay. <laughs> I think in the future. If <laughs> and if you really like this reading, anybody can call in for a dollar ninety nine to talk to me. Or you, can, <laughs> you can come to the uh, seminar we're giving. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I think that this beautiful network that we are on, Vibe Network, may in the future be getting an event together. I'm just throwing this out there. I don't know if it's really going to happen, but I feel that if I put it out in the universe, it may actually fucking happen. But anyway, that we as a network may do something like that, and all of the hosts would go, and it would be like a big event. See? Oh, cool. I think cool. that would be awesome. Road trip. Yeah. I know, and how cool would it be for all the fans and stuff like that to be able to come out? Or not no, we fans. Ain't no fans? We ain't got no fans. We got two people, and we believe they're stalkers. But it's anyway, my mama. Well, yeah, my mama don't even. <laughs> it's my mama and Jesus. That's all I got on my side. Jesus, mom, don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, they, they would be 
able to come out and, like, you know, talk to us and chill. And Marcel, let me tell you something. That lady is freaking awesome. And if you ever get a chance to do an event there, um, no matter who it is, um, she's really cool. We've been blessed. Because we'll say, hey, can we come up for Halloween? Or, hey, can we do this? And uh, she is really, she's all about the community and helping. Um, when we first went in at St. Albans, um, there was another group there, was, which was great. It really were. They were um, Mountain Ridge, I think it is, actually. Yep. Um, and they were really great people. But Marcel is taking this on a business level that's freaking awesome. Across the board, she treats everybody the same, and as long as you're good, you are wanting to um, be good for St. Albans, then you're good with her, and I love it. I think she's awesome. I wish more, I wish more people who had uh, the ability to do that would do that. We have worked with so many people and tried to do many things in you know areas, and there's so many people that – just don't want it and don't agree with it. They, it's almost like they just want the place to go, go to part, you know, get all the hell, and we just want to keep it alive. Exactly, exactly. I mean, seriously, like when we first went there, there was no offices or anything, and then um, they did have one office. But, dude, when you go downstairs and you talk to her, she is business, and she's got her computer loaded up. She's got her glasses on. She is ready to do business, and I love <laughs> it. I really do. Um, I was going to tell you something. Oh, Rodney. Rodney, i got to yeah. talk to you. Remember okay. the last time we talked on the phone, and I said I had that dream about um, Maritza, something happening to her. Remember that? And it had something uh-huh. to do with water or something like that. Do you remember us talking about that? Yeah. I saw on her damn page the other day, she was doing a movie, and I think she was, they like, she got stabbed or something near a damn tub. I was like, are yeah. you shitting me? <laughs> yes, yeah, I said. I said, Rodney, is she working on a movie or something like that? That was so weird to me to even have a dream about her. Only meeting her that one time through y'all, um, and I thought that was really cool. But I wanted to let you know because we both had that dream that something was going on, and then I saw pictures on her page where she was like in a movie where I think she might have got stabbed or something. She had blood on her, and it was near a bathtub. I was like, thank you, Jesus. Now I done figured this out. Yeah, I talked to her and. Uh... I haven't talked to her much because where she's been so busy working on that uh, film. And uh, I told her I was worried about her and asked how she was doing. She's like, I'm okay. Because I thought, I thought it might have been because where they're getting so much flooding and rain out there. And, and that kind of scared me. And she said, no. She said, she's good. Yeah, that that's kind of cool. Like, that's something we've learned in all this also is, like, those little nagging voices. Um I, I, I mean, if something is consistently and consistently in your life and keep it on pecking on you, like say this or do this, we've learned um, with the guidance of, like, Pat and other people, um, they're like, no, that's just maybe somebody trying to tell you something. So we just need to take a minute to take that in. And But I think that's kind of cool. It all came back around, um, and it was just really neat. Oh, yeah. she She's doing – I'm actually going to have her on the show at the end of the month. Uh, oh, I saw you. You're going to have the – oh, by the way, um, Pat that I was talking about is going to be on Ryan's show next week talking about the book and stuff, too, that we were talking about tonight. Um, so that's really cool. But I saw you, mister, are getting ready to have Mr. Booth and his beautiful wife on your show. I'm so jealous. I know, Ryan. Am I good or what? Come on. Come oh, on, my God. Great. And I can't wait to hear that and listen in and stuff like that. I'm excited for that. Aren't you, Ashley? I am. That man doesn't know it, but I've been trying to stalk him for years, so now I'm just going to have to stalk <laughs> through your show. <laughs> well, I, 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 I got a question. One more. What are y'all's plans for 2016? What What is the hot, sexy goddesses of the paranormal going to be up to this year? <laughs> say that because you know we call ryan and holly the party gods because if any shit goes wrong they'll swoop in real quick and help you on the, and i think holly might be on here tonight um but anyway they you don't know they're there they only swoop in so they're our party gods and i would love to be a goddess so thank you very much um my plans for 2016 is just to party more hang out with really good friends and try not to get drunk or naked anywhere actually what's yours Mine is to get drunk at naked places, um, <laughs> to party more, um, to go to Texas. 
Um, not to date ugly guys this time, and not even when I'm drunk. Um, I like attractive ones this year. That's that's a really big feat for me. And I want to hang out with some awesome people like you guys and go to some great locations and just keep this party rolling. I know, man. I, I think want this is going to be a great year for us all. I th- I th- <laughs> Robin, are you planning on keeping your clothes on or off, honey? That depends on what kind of it year we're going to have. It depends on what's in the pot, honey. <laughs> uh, I want to comment on that, but due to technical <laughs> I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, we're going to have a great year, and I think, Rodney, I could not be more happy with this network. I don't know about you, but... I feel like I, this is the most, and i got to give a shout-out to the Vibe Network, is I've been on other networks, and um, I know you haven't, Rodney, but you've been around radio and stuff like that, that I've never been more supported and more helped and promoted. Oh, my God, I love this. So if we could just get people to listen in here, honey, you just better hold on because it's going to be one great year. Well, I think we got a caller. Let me see who it is for you, Oh, ladies. shit. Oh no! It's hello, Olivia. Hello, oh, hello. Who is this? It's Olivia. Oh, hi, oh, hey, baby. Hey, baby girl. Hey. Oh my gosh, what are you doing in Kentucky, baby? I'm just. I don't know. I'm just hanging out. I, I was listening <laughs> to you all, and I was like, Rodney, can I come and say hi to them? Oh, so, we I love you, it. baby. But, for anyone listening, little Olivia, she is our youngest one in our group. She is our baby, and we are so proud of her. She is just uh, doing a role in Leah Smock. She has done great. Yeah. You can check out the clips on YouTube. Oh, I know. That was, that that was so a big awesome. huge, well, that was a big huge just, part of my year, or my last year, yeah. We're running about out of time. So I, I know. I, I just came in here real quick just to say <laughs> hi. <laughs> Oh, we're glad to hear from you, baby. I I loved getting to see you person to person when we came down for Rodney's little Halloween party. We love that. Oh my gosh, we love that. That was our highlight. I tell you, of the holiday season. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Olivia's like my third daughter, so she she's my little kid. Aww. I tell you what, she can do a damn. Uh, what was it? Michael Jackson's Thriller. I was loving oh my it. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess that's about all the time we got for you, ladies, and I appreciate y'all coming on and 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 helping us out and getting me started with this. And uh, anything you all need, we're always here for you. Like I said, y'all family, uh, like close Kentucky kin. <laughs> Not the kissing kind, just the real close kind. <laughs> you know, I, I like to thank Vibe uh, Radio and. Holly and Ryan for giving us this opportunity, and and uh, and I hope that we do have a long future in this. I hope I didn't run everybody off and mess no, up. No, you did back. great. They kicked me off. They're like you can't even click on to get on. <laughs> <laughs> you did great, Rodney, and thank you for having us on, baby. Love oh, you, girl. You. So thank you so much. Love you guys. Bye, Bye, Bye girlie. Bye, bye. And I guess that will conclude our radio show, and I'd like to thank everybody. Thanks, everybody. We will, I guess we will talk to you all next week. Thanks a lot. Good job, Bye-bye. guys. Have, Yay, good. I didn't think. <laughs> I am so sorry. Thought, oh, my God. I, I kept, listen. <laughs> it's I not a problem, me. Rodney. I kept waiting for an email, and I said, what fucking email is she talking about? And then when you reminded me, I'm like, shit, how the fuck I was like, Rodney, I was very introduction and everything. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Listen, y'all done great, and we all go through this. And like I said, y'all done awesome. Don't worry about it. Uh, I've been through some shit in my time, my little time on network. <laughs> well, I appreciate well, I appreciate you. Thank you for kind of leading me in. <laughs> oh, honey, you're welcome. If I, I'm good at talking. I could talk away all night, but y'all done a great job. And, of course, um, the girls are always awesome. I do, yeah, I Well, thank you all. I appreciate it so much. I read the 
questions. And um, yeah, what um, what the what girls were talking about was we are planning a, a book investigation at St. Albans. The whole network will be there, and we, it'll be live. And uh, we'll be on the air, getting to talk to people during investigation and and stuff like that. So it will give everybody opportunity to come down and meet each other because all of us is either from like West Virginia. Um, Amy Jo, I think, is the farthest away, but yeah, we're all around the Virginia area. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that yeah. Is awesome. I think. Yeah, I think I'm only what maybe an hour away from you, Rodney. Oh, really? Yeah, I live up here in Wise County. Oh, that's right. That's right. I keep forgetting that you live down Wise. Yep. I live uh, actually in Pound, right at the Kentucky line. Well, heck yeah. Well, yeah. we all together some time to do something. Yeah, so, uh, but I'll let y'all go. Y'all had a good show, and um, you'll get used to it. You'll be pros here in a, in a month. <laughs> Well, well thank that. you. So appreciate it. Anytime, darling. Good night. All right, babies. All right, night. Okay, y'all have a good night. Night. Bye bye. Hi, this is Maury Moreland Morrison here to tell you Geico has more than just great savings, much more. Yes, while Geico could help you rack up more moolah faster than you can say metamorphosis, they've also been the fastest growing auto insurer for more than ten years. That's more like it. Furthermore, GEICO has fast and friendly claim service. That might seem like an oxymoron, but it's not. All the more reason to say no other auto insurer has more more than GEICO. GEICO. Expect great savings and a whole lot more.